How's it going, Eliminators? Do you have a snowblower that still drives forwards even though you shifted into reverse? Or perhaps you have a snowblower that drives in reverse when you shifted into forwards? Well, today I'm going to be showing you how to properly adjust your speed select lever. So with that being said, let's get right into it. So today in the shop, I'm working on a Yardworks 24-inch two-stage snowblower here built by MTD. This snowblower came in for a full service and it did run. However, the engine was surging quite badly when the choke lever was set to the run position. So I went and removed the cover here to oversize the pilot jet in the carburetor to a total size of 20 thousandths of an inch. I have a video on how to do that on a Snowtech snowblower manufactured by Aaron's. And even though the carburetors on the LCT engines on the Aaron's are a little bit different, they do share the same pilot jet design. So if you'd like to watch that video, you can click in the top right of your screen. So once the service was completed and all of the pivot points got a little bit of white lithium grease, we have two spare shear pins installed in the console, as well as one that we replaced down there. I took it outside to run it, and I noticed that when you shift this snowblower into reverse one, the snowblower continues to go forward, and the snowblower only goes in reverse in reverse two. So today I'm gonna to show you how to easily fix that with just four tools. You're going to need two 7 16 wrenches, or in this case, I have a 7 16 socket on my Milwaukee Impact with a 7 16 box and or opened end wrench. You're also going to require a medium size crescent wrench and a quick clamp. And I would also recommend some type of mat because you're gonna be laying on the ground. I use one of these foldable foam pro lift mats. They're awesome. Now, before we make the adjustment to fix this issue, I'll briefly walk you through how this design works. You have this lever here, and that lever connects to a cable right in the center there that goes all the way down to this mechanism there, that whole arm that moves, and that goes in to move your shift fork that connects to the friction wheel. So now that you know how the system works, before you can make any adjustments, you have to figure out what works and what doesn't. Essentially, which is the gear that is not functioning as it's supposed to. And in our case, it's the R1. So what you wanna do is from the F1 position, you wanna slowly pull back on your lever to see which direction that arm travels. And you can see that as we go into reverse, that arm is moving up. So you can now come back to the shift lever and we're going to put it all the way forward into the number six position. That will take some of the tension off of the cable. So because we've established that this bracket here rotates up when we put the machine into R1, what we need is for this bracket to go up even more, which means we're going to have to adjust this triangular bracket down so that this arm pulls up higher when we go into R1. Again, because this arm here goes back to the shift fork that controls the friction wheel, the farther that this triangular bracket is down means the farther this whole arm will lift up, which means the farther the shift fork will move the friction wheel over on the friction plate. And to do that, we're gonna be using these four tools here. It's super simple, and with these tools, you can do it by yourself. So I'll show you that now. First up, we're going to be taking the adjustable wrench and we're going to be putting it over the flat spot on this arm here. Now, what we're going to be using is the wrench to provide leverage to move that arm. See all that slack on that cable? But the problem is, if you're doing this by yourself, well, you're gonna need a few hands to make the adjustment. So if you let that go, it's spring-loaded on the torsion spring that is on that shaft underneath the machine. So that's where our quick clamp comes into play. So with the wrench on the shift arm there, you are going to use the quick clamp to hold the end of your wrench onto the tubular handle support. And you can see now our cable has all kinds of slack on it. So we can now use our 7 16th socket and 7 16th wrench to loosen off this 7 16th nut there to make the adjustment on this adjuster plate. Now they do use what looks to be like a nylock nut on there because again, they don't want that coming loose. So you should be able to loosen it up a bit, but at some point the bolt head at the back side of this bracket will spin and that's where you'll need the wrench to hold it. Again, doing this by yourself, that is why I use the wrench and the quick clamp together so that I can do these by myself without any help from anyone else. Now, before you loosen that nut and bolt, if you want, you can take a little paint marker or 
permanent marker and mark a line from the bolt center out to the end to mark where your position was before. But because I do this so much, normally I don't have to. And all you're going to do, like I said, is move the bracket down ever so slightly. You don't wanna bring it way down here because then what'll happen is when you're in forward one, your machine may also be in reverse. Now, once you make that quick little adjustment, go ahead and tighten that up. Now, you may find that you have to do this adjustment two or three times to fine tune the position of your gear selector lever. However, you might get lucky on the first go, but at this point, we can now remove our quick clamp. Back off the lever, allowing tension to go back onto the shift cable. It's in number six still, so there's not gonna be a ton of tension on that. But once we put the lever back into F1, if we come down to this cable here, you guys can see there is tension that is being applied to that. And then I'll try to get a shot here. If we go into R1 right there, this lever, because that triangular bracket has been rotated down further, this whole arm should be lifting up more, positioning the friction disc farther over on the friction plate, allowing you to have reverse in R1. And of course, it'll go faster in reverse in R2 because the friction wheel moves over, increasing the circumference that it has to spin on. Essentially, it just spins faster. So the friction wheel spins faster, thus your drive axle spins faster. So we'll take this machine outside, see how it runs and test out how it drives. It is absolutely pouring rain outside right now. I'm sure glad we winterized our garage. You might see a video on that in the future. All right, so I wheeled this unit outside in the rain. A couple primes here, shouldn't need choke because the garage is hot. Forward one, goes forward. Reverse one, goes in reverse. Awesome. So just like that, you can adjust the drive on your MTD branded snowblower, whether it's a Cub Cadet, Yard Works, White Outdoors, Troy Built, or even some of the Craftsman models. Now, as you guys know from previous videos, and as you can see here on this one, I use white lithium grease. It is a three-in-one branded white lithium. And what we're gonna be doing is spraying the little Z-Bend right there, coat it nice and good because those have a tendency to break. But as I've shown in previous videos, these cables are so flimsy that I get calls for this speed selector cable all the time being broken and I have to replace them. It's pretty sad that uh, MTD doesn't use just a thicker cable and they would literally solve that issue. So I've showed you how to properly adjust your speed select lever if your machine goes forward in R1, but Let's say your machine goes in reverse in F1. So it should be going forward, but you're going reverse. So it's the opposite issue that we just adjusted. Well, all you have to do is the opposite of what we just did. Instead of raising this triangular bracket up, what you're gonna do is loosen that off and lower it down. And then that will allow you to have forward gear in F1. Super simple guys, that's it for today. So you guys might not know this, but a lot of my videos are kind of spur of the moment. I really don't plan anything. It's just, I'll be working on something in the shop and I'll say, I haven't done a video on that or I haven't done a video on that in a long time. Might be a good video to film. And lo and behold, I have this Craftsman 30 inch that just came in for the exact same issue. So the unit wouldn't drive properly. You could see this one. This is kind of like your neutral where your friction wheel will be in the center of the friction plate. And then back here, you'll have slow reverse, faster reverse, slow forward, fast forward. On this one, there is no cable. There's actually a metal bracket and you guys might be able to see there, we do have some permanent marker lines on there. So this one was marked and all you have to do on this particular one is loosen this nut off and then you could slide these two rods together to position this triangular bracket here so that your shift fork which connects to that bar there moves you know to the left more or to the right more so now when we move this one you can see it has full range of motion very very nice well that's going to be it for today's video if you guys enjoyed it think about leaving me a thumbs up you know it really helps me out you can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week, 
So be sure to stop on by next week, check channel up for new content. And as always guys, thanks for watching.